they are just just children of prisoners in the judicial care system so how do we bring these two mechanisms together would be the answer thank you very much thank you uh, would like to get the floor oh, please madam and do after her uh, Helen Horton from the visitor centers in Dublin um, I'm a great believer in keeping things simple and uh, it seems to me that um, in our creche nearly all of the children want to make a nice picture to take in to daddy uh, and that is about the simplest thing one could do and uh, when I uh, am involved in courses running uh, for the Alternatives to Violence project, the f we often talk about parenting, and uh, the fathers just take these as the most treasures objects they could have. They bring them in very often on a session when I ask people to bring in something treasured. They may be in photos of their child or children, but they will also bring the pictures they've got from these little toddlers who uh, can barely uh, draw a rabbit, let alone anything else. But it doesn't matter. Even it's just a few crosses in different colors of uh, crayon. It is a real pleasure for the parent. I'm a great believer in keeping things simple. And I think any prison could uh, help children to do that. And once they've got into their habit, they do it at home and then bring in uh, their pretty pictures to daddy uh, next time they come to visit. Thank you, please. Thank you. Thank you. Me, Nenawala from Children and Families Across Borders uh, as part of the International Social Work Network. Um, really, my point is about uh, um, the incarceration of parents um, in a different jurisdiction and children who are then separated across international borders as a result of that. And the point really is about the welfare of the child and making sure that relevant information is passed on to the uh, other jurisdiction so that the authorities are notified and the right authorities can then safeguard the child, protect the child, and make sure that there is somebody um, who can then exercise parental rights and responsibility for the child so the child isn't left um, as we often find um, being passed from uh, family member to family member homeless or at the mercy of another caregiver so I guess there's an issue about that but also we don't have any official data or statistics on um, how many children are actually uh, left um, in, in different jurisdictions because their parent is incarcerated in a different different country. So there's a combination of uh, welfare, child protection and uh, parental responsibility issues. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, who, who else would like to take the floor? Please. Um. Susan Ellis from Park Prison in South Wales in the UK and I just thought that you may like to be aware of what we're trying to promote and give the children a voice and we have a new families intervention unit where all our programs involve the families especially the children and we work with organizations such as Safe Ground UK, Action on Addiction, Care for the Family and all of our programs we bring in the family they all work together as a group and we've just piloted um, a substance misuse program, which is very enlightening, working with the children so that the parents got to hear what effect their actions were having on the children. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Please, uh, that lady first, and Peter, and you, okay? Um, I just wanted to respond, Deanne, OSI, US to Oliver's interest in different subsets of these children and um, what we've, we've created some school-based healing uh, circles for children who have in common the incarceration of one or both parents and those have been very effective but um, 
using sort of restorative justice techniques there. But the, the youth have also asked to create a larger group that helps to sensitize their peers, because that's very important, especially at the adolescent or pre-adolescent age. And so there's a larger group now of those who uh, perceive themselves as being impacted by the incarceration of their friends family members so there's an ever-expanding group because I do think um, we the kids are not impacted you know only within their family it, it extends out through the community <coughs> thank you uh, I would like to come back on s uh, and stress the fact of the importance of the training and education of people, uh, professionals working with the children. Uh, I visited personally last year many of the prison uh, from the point of ombudsman office in my country and speaking with uh, people working inside and outside. and. What was surprising that really, according to our national law, all the prisons have some special, uh, small department uh, working in the social issue and so on. But when we are starting to speak with the people, the all hundred percent told us, you are the first uh, visit here asking us about the, our problem, never participated in some kind of education, some kind of training. It is only decided for other staff of prison, but uh, never for the staff uh, working in the social area. So that was completely isolated. It was the only goodwill of these people. And the same it's on the part when we are speaking with the uh, people in the social area, working in the communities. The, the people working in, especially in the area with the children, uh, with the imprisoned uh, parents and so on, they, they are not so, so happy with this work. Nobody ac accepts this work as a, as a very needed and so on. That what I would like to stress is the fact that the social status of these people, the uh, continuity of education and training is extremely needed for the children. The children are waiting when, uh, when I stressed morning the fact that we need the case-by-case -case approach, uh, individual approach, but this approach is needed the professional staff and that we can go on to resolve the situation in favor of best interest of the child. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this lady first and you after her, okay? Just want, uh, Rebecca Chung, Partners of Prisoners and Family Support Group, uh, just wanted to respond to Oliver's point about vulnerable groups of children and contact with an incarcerated parent. I wanted to raise the issue of foreign prisoners and anecdotal evidence which suggests that families with no leave to remain or concerns about their legal status are unlikely to visit prisons due to concerns about contact with enforcement agencies <coughs> and how this might be addressed. <coughs> Thank you. And you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, one further, uh, Jan Wetzel, Amnesty International. One further point I'd like to raise are the adverse economic consequences of parental uh, detention. I think it's been mentioned before that quite often the person in detention may be the breadwinner of the family, and therefore the children um, are in uh, often in, find themselves in dire economic circumstances. Uh, this problem is. Uh, exacerbated in our opinion in those countries that use the system of DIA, of uh, financial compensation under Sharia law, uh, or enable, um, or in theory, enable families of offenders to, to pay for financial compensation. That, of course, is quite difficult if the breadwinner now is, for example, a juvenile son um, of a person in. Uh, uh, prison, uh, and and this exacerbates the the potential discriminatory effect of um, this form of, of uh, treatment. Therefore, um, uh, I invite the the committee to to think uh, and, and other speakers to think about the economic consequences uh, as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, this lady and you and you, okay. 
Nancy Lax from Families Outside. Just to follow on very briefly about the economic consequences, we're finding that many of the economic consequences are hidden um, in terms of not only the direct loss of income, but in terms of the loss of eligibility for certain social welfare benefits, but also things like um, we found out that uh, people's home insurance can be invalidated if because you have a change of circumstances where someone's gone into prison or if they accept a prisoner back into their home after release that they might not be eligible for certain benefits that they were claiming before. The fact that grandparents caring for children might not be eligible for the um, kinship care allowance, for example, certain social wel welfare benefits that other carers might be eligible for. So it's certainly worth exploring what types of financial impact there is beyond the obvious ones. Oui, Dominique Lemay. Dominique Lemay from the Veranio Philippine Foundation. We host children whose parents are in prison, or one of their parents is incarcerated, and we try with our various partners, for example, if the mother is outside, or we try and uh, shelter the child uh, temporarily. Uh, uh, for example, the mother is incarcerated, then we try and help her to get back to her children afterwards. It's important for all parties concerned to uh, to try and spend as much time with their children as possible. It's important with our psychological teams, with our medical teams. It's important to for the children to find a balance, you know, to find their place in a situation which is very difficult. But to keep this notion of family, even if the family is uh, living in the street, for example, um, it's important to keep the idea of family itself. And we have a particular team which is uh, dedicated to children and families in the street to uh, uh, with a daycare center. This allows children to uh, bear in mind the notion of family and to eventually, uh, at, at the end of the process, perhaps end up back with their parents if they're not in prison for too long. If the family are incarcerated for a long time, then the child will stay with us after that. Thank you. Please. Peter Shaw Smith, the Danish Institute for Human Rights. Uh, fo just to follow up on some of the many examples mentioned about different ways of, of keeping contact, uh, and uh, the point also about training, uh, I would just like briefly to mention a project that we, the Danish Institute for Human Rights, currently run with the Danish Prison Service. Our Norwegian friends uh, mentioned so-called children's officers or children's ambassadors working uh, inside the prison. We have a project at the moment, it's funded by Lego, you know, the toy. <laughs> and uh, we, 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 we train staff, prison staff, prison officers and social workers in prison. We cha train them in children's rights and, and uh, uh, human rights. And they, they work uh, in order to secure the, 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 ch the perspective of the, ch uh, the children, the children's rights perspective in the institutions. And these, these people work with many of the different uh, uh, items which have come up today, storybook dads, uh, uh, study circles for, for parents in prison, also improving visiting conditions. So I think we, we've, uh, uh, it's, it's one way to, uh, to, to, uh, to do many of these things with, 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 uh, with, uh, uh, with one mechanism, uh, so to speak. And, uh, and one other thing I would like to mention about that project is it's been extremely encouraging the way that we've located staff working in prisons who are almost unstoppable. I think it's, it's, it's a way for them to, to do a lot of the things that they have longed for, uh, for many years to do. Uh, and they have uh, 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 some staff don't like what they're doing, but they, they still do it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we can go on, please. Okay. Uh, good morning, Tears. Um, something again about the, the, the financial impact of, of incarceration of parents. Uh, what we see is in actually in very poor areas, uh, and there are parents, of course, who are in very bad conditions, and then it happens that one parent goes to prison. And then really the impact can, is totally disastrous. Now the, the, uh, we've seen mothers that, that, that basically give up their kids. Uh, fathers more often give up their kids, but even mothers, and it's not, not, I can see that these mothers really, they love their kids, but they, they really don't have any, any other choice. I've also seen cases in, in, in which uh, mothers sell their children uh, to obscure networks uh, and, and, and they end up in, in the sex industry and these things as well. I think especially in, in poor places, and, and there is a link between incarceration and, and, and these type of issues. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Okay, Alan, please. 
Alan Kikuchi White for SOS Children's Villages International. I just want to pick up on the question asked about family support. Um, through our programs that we will work with family strengthening and also recognising of course absolutely the need to only intervene where it's absolutely necessary and respect privacy. But it must start with this idea that there's an initial assessment of the, of the family to assess the need for an intervention and then what the nature of that intervention is. In our work, we then work with the families to develop a family development plan, which is about supportive and empowering measures to bring the family back to self-reliance and then ultimately to exit the program. Specifically with children of incarcerated parents, and not to give you a long list of potential ways we can support families, but that, that has included facilitating access to legal services and representation, counselling, self-help and community groups, uh, working with teachers to support children in the classroom, challenging stigmatisation, and then just to pick up on that point about um, in economics, um, providing access to vocational training and other income generating activities. There's a whole list of other trainings which I won't go into, but they're in their written submission. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, please. Um, Julia Morgan, Plymouth University. Um, we have just um, completed some research, a uh, small scale research project, um, looking at the role of schools in the UK in one local authority. And um, what, what we found from this um, research project is that there is very low awareness of um, the group of children, of um, children of prisoners. Teachers and head teachers um, are not really um, conscious of this group as, as a group of children. Um, and when they are faced with the issue of um, children of prisoners, they can sometimes respond, um, although trying to be well-meaning with support, they can often respond in not appropriate ways um, by directing children to support systems, for example, for uh, children who, um, whose parents have died um, um, and who have separated. So um, I think um, it brings um, issues um, to do with recommendations about raising awareness, um, about training and knowledge again, and that appro appropriate support should be identified. And again, I come back to the recommendation that children should be involved in deciding um, what, what is appropriate uh, support and how they would like to be supported. Thank you. Um, it was just, sorry, Angus Moore, Reedy Jones from Prison Advice and Care Trust. It was just very briefly to touch on um, the issues of different types of contact. And obviously, the best type of contact is in your own home um, with your family. And, um, and using alternatives to custody in the first place does make contact a lot easier throughout the sentence. Um, and it's not that controversial because across certainly Europe and the United States, 20 years ago, we were sending a lot fewer parents to prison than we are today and and I think even if you just move at the clock and and looked at well, who gets sent to prison for which offences and why um, and and drawing out um, certain certain sections of them 